going to show you a few Excel formula functions that I find useful in my bookkeeping templates. Excel has hundreds of formulas, but the ones I'm showing you are some of the ones I use the most. Underneath this video is a downloadable version of the Excel workbook that I'm using in this video so you can practice. Here is a snapshot of basic formulas for adding, subtracting, dividing and multiplying and percentages. You'll see that the divide symbol doesn't look like the same version taught at school and the multiply symbol is a little different too. In Excel, when you want to add two cells of data together, you'll use the cell references, not the numbers that you want added together. In this example, I have the number 100 in cell B3. So where column B and row 3 intersect is the cell reference. The example formula shows you how to go 100 plus 50 and over here is the result. You'll know there's a formula when you see the equal symbol in front of a string of numbers because all formulas in Excel start with an equal symbol. To finalize a formula, press enter on your keyboard or click on the tick up here next to the formula bar. There are two places in Excel to see the formula behind a result. The first place is in the formula bar at the top here. This enables you to look at the formula and look down at the result. Formulas can be edited and corrected within this bar. The second place to see a formula is within the cell, either by double clicking the cell or pressing F2 on your keyboard. You can see the formula within the cell and you can still see it in the formula bar but this time you can't see the result. You can also edit the formula within the cell. In column E, I have typed example formulas, but because they start with an equal symbol, I have added an apostrophe in front of them, which tells Excel not to perform the calculation, but to leave it as text. I'll remove the apostrophe, and you can see the formula has been activated. I'll add the apostrophe back in. In a formula, Excel always displays the reference letters as capitals, but you don't have to type them in as capitals. You can type them in as lowercase letters and Excel will automatically change them to capitals. Also, when you type a letter, Excel produces a list of formulas starting with that letter. If I want the sum function, which I'll talk about a little bit later, I'll type equals, then S. The list is very long, so I'll add a U. And when I see the sum function, I double click on it, and then I can process the formula and press enter. On a side note, the sum function encloses the formula within brackets. When you use the formula, you don't have to enter the closing bracket because Excel will do this automatically for you. I'll now show you how to add formulas into a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is a basic cash book for recording income minus expenses. It has a date column, income columns, expense columns, and a bank balance column. I have entered all the data for the month of January and now I need to calculate the totals for each day and record the effect those have on the bank balance for each day. First I'll do the income totals in column E. I type equals, then I select C3 and you can see my selected cell has a moving border around it. So this tells me I'm in the middle of an active process or calculation. Then I'll enter a plus symbol because I'm adding two cells together. And then I select cell D3 and press enter to finalize this calculation process. 
I'll just quickly double click on cell E3 so you can see the formula. C3 is in blue and D3 is in red. If you were calculating a whole bunch of different cells, each one would be a different color. This just helps you track um, which cells are included in a formula. Now I could enter in the same formula to row four like this, but manually entering formulas into each cell is time consuming. So the quicker method is to copy and paste the formulas down the page like this. Right click, copy, select all the cells, paste. Or to autofill the formula down the column, I'll just undo the pasting that I did. And now to autofill, I double click on this tiny box in the bottom right hand corner and all my cells are filled in. Now I'll add up all the expenses. This time I'm showing you a different method to do the calculation because there are quite a few cells involved, all of these, and individually adding lots of cells in a formula like this is not a proficient way to do it. Instead I'll use the sum function. I'll type equals s u and double click on sum and then select the cells I want included in the formula and enter. Another way is to find the sum function under the home menu and auto sum. However, sometimes it either includes too many cells or excludes some of the cells because it stops at the first number or set of numbers it sees. So then you just have to drag the selection over by holding down your left mouse button on either corner and dragging over. Once again, I'll autofill the formula down the column. Now I'll enter a formula into the bank balance column starting with row three. This balance must include the total from the day before plus total income from row three minus total expenses also from row three, which gives me today's balance. The first day of the month will include this opening bank balance, which is from the previous month of December. So I'll type equals and select cell M1 and then type plus and select cell E3 and then type minus and select cell L3 and then enter. In this case, if I try to autofill the formula going down the column, it will calculate them all incorrectly because in this first formula, there is a cell that is skipped, which is the bank balance cell. So the autofill going down the page skips a cell. The skipping of the cell is wrong and that's why it shows a hash value result. I'll just undo that. Then I'll autofill down only to the next row and amend the reference from M2, the bank balance heading, to M3 and enter. And now I'll autofill this formula down the column. I'm now inserting an auto sum formula to get the total for each type of income and expense. Starting with consulting income. Sometimes the auto sum stops when it comes to a blank cell, so you just have to click the box in the corner and drag the selection box up and enter. I'll now copy and paste that across. Now I'll delete the freight formula because I want to show you what happens when you try to auto sum a column with no numbers by itself. Excel goes to the closest cells on the left. So I must show Excel what to add up by clicking on the cell above and dragging up to row three and enter. Next, I want to update my spreadsheet for February and add the opening bank balance for February to reflect the closing bank balance from January. So I'll do a linking formula. I type equals, select cell M25 
and that's all. If I delete a row for information, I'll just delete row 15. The bank balance column indicates a hash ref issue, or in other words, a broken formula. In this case, each formula in the bank balance column is linked to the cell above it. If that cell is removed, the formula breaks. Unfortunately, Excel can't seem to automatically fix this. To fix it, go into the first hash ref cell. Remove the hash ref and enter the reference for the cell above, which is M14. So now that all looks good. Now I'll insert a row, and you can see that none of the columns in the new row have the formulas included. I have to manually update the new row by going to the cell above and autofill down within each column. I'll now go and fill in all the formulas for February to April, and um, after that we'll go into the transpose formula. Transpose formula is the fastest way to take data from a row and flip it into a column or the other way around. I'm going to do an income statement so I can see if I'm making a profit. I've already prepared the headings here. I'll do income first, so I'll just type income as the subheading. Now I want to bring in the account names using the transpose formula. The trick here is to know how many cells are required. I'll just go to my spreadsheet and you can see there are two income accounts, consulting and stock. So I must select two cells before typing the transpose formula. I'll enter equals, trans, double click on the transpose function from the list then select the two income account names. Hold down Ctrl and Shift on the keyboard and press Enter. This last part is important. If you don't hold down Ctrl and Shift at the same time, the formula won't work. I'll just show you. If you try to change any information in this transposed array of information, it won't change. You can't edit it. I'll try and delete B5, but Excel won't let it happen. You have to do the whole formula again to update the information, especially if you've added new accounts or numbers or anything like that. So that's the account names done. Now I'll do the totals for each month, January to April, and I'll auto sum these while you watch. Expenses and tuck the expenses heading 
and count how many cells I need. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Select the cells on the income statement. One, two, three, four, five, six. And enter the transpose formula. I'll fill in the rest of this sheet and or we'll speed up the video. Do linking formulas if you don't want to do the transpose formula but it will take much longer to fill in the sheet. I'll delete out all the info so I can show you the linking method. So we link them like this equals go to the sheet select consulting income enter equals Go to the sheet, select stock sales, enter. Equals consulting income total, enter. Equals stock sales total, enter. And work your way through your spreadsheet slowly. When like you have a spreadsheet full of formulas, it's often handy to just look at all the formulas instead of the results by going to formulas, show formulas. This is a fantastic way to study them for errors or to make changes. When you click on a formula, it instantly highlights all the cells included in it. You can do your necessary edits, and then once you're finished, just click on Show Formulas again to go back to the data. The final thing I want to show you is how to show or hide zero results. On the spreadsheet, there are a lot of zeros where the formulas had no data to calculate. I personally don't like looking at so many zeros, so there are two ways of hiding them. The first one is to go File, Options, Advanced, scroll down until you get to Display Options for this worksheet. Remove the tick next to Show a Zero in Cells by clicking on the tick and then select OK. Now all the zeros are gone and it looks much better. I will just undo that. So the other way to hide all the zeros and to maybe put a dash instead is to go home comma style. And you can see it puts a lot of dashes in the cells that have formulas with a zero result. So that's the end of this tutorial on formulas in Excel. I hope you found it helpful. Um, you can email me and ask me any questions by going on my contact page. Thanks for watching.